going to continue under the big umbrella, the year theme of Kingdom Watchers. Kingdom Watchers. And last week we started the new series entitled Break My Will, The Master's Call, Jonah. This week we want to minister from the sermon topic, Another Carrier. Another Carrier. I begin. Well, first of all, let's take a look at verse 17. That's my highlight verse for the week here. Jonah 1, verse 17. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Now the Lord had prepared a fish, a great fish, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The word of the Lord for the people of God. And so again, the series, Break My Will, the master's call, Jonah. The topic, another carrier. <laughs> hey, another carrier. I begin. One of my favorite quotes from William Shakespeare is from his poem entitled, All the World's a Stage. Let me read just a bit, just a little bit of the poem. It reads thus, All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Now, church, the reason that I like this poem is because I think of it in context of the pretext of the existence of God before all and above all. It's God's world. I believe in creation. It is a theory to some, to me. It is the core of my belief as to how I think and who I give credit for everything in life. Church, it's not, it's not Shakespeare's world. It's not the Kennedy's world, the, the Gates world, the Queen's world, Trump's world. It's God's world. Now, right there, somebody ought to just relax a little bit. <laughs> that no matter who, who they're calling on, Dr. Who, she, Dr. Who, it, it don't matter who, she, he, who, it don't matter. It's God's world. Uh-huh. I believe like the sweet psalmist David has written in Psalms 24, verses 1 and 2, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he have founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. I believe that it's God's world. Isaiah 42 and 5, it says, Thus said God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Jeremiah 10 and 12 reads, He, talking about our God, Joel, He hath made the earth by His power. He hath established the word by His wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens <laughs> by His discretion. Lord have mercy. Psalms 102 verses 25 and 26, it reads, Of old, Hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. And then Genesis 2, verse 7, it says this, listen. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. <laughs> the nerve of a dusty journal to decide to disobey God's script. The nerve of a dusty Jonah to decide that he can flip the script God's script, the nerve of a dusty Jonah to think that he can rewrite the play. He forgot. He forgot that he is a 
hired actor living on borrowed time, allowed to live a life wherein he must obey the one who created him. It's not Jonah's choice. It's God's will. And church, it's not your choice. It's God's will. Yet, yet, God does not force his will upon mankind. God presents his will and invites you to be a covenant partner in his design for your life. The juxtaposition is that the almighty God, listen now, listen, the almighty God who can move the mountains that he made does not move your mind to force you to move in a certain way. Hey, God presents the plan and then offers you, as it were, a pen to sign off on the document called your life. Woo. See, somebody listening, you signed off on God's plan. And that's why you're living the victory life. <laughs> you signed off on the document called the plan of God for your life. <laughs> and that's why you can sing victory in Jesus. <laughs> because you understand, <laughs> you understood <laughs> that when you signed on the document <laughs> that God has for your life, <laughs> that you have already won the victory. <laughs> and so that no matter what happens <laughs> during the part of the play <laughs> called your life, that God already has victory at the end of your life. Somebody ought to be praising him for that. I, I don't know about you, but in such times of uncertainty, I am so glad of the certainty of God. God is yet in control. I don't care what it looks like, sounds like, feels like. What? I am telling you that God, look at it now, he sits. Lord, have mercy. I almost see him like he's sitting under an umbrella by the beach. <laughs> God sits on the circle of the earth and views the motion of mankind. So God has not forgotten you. God has not stepped out. He has you in his view. He's not forgotten you. He's watching you. My God, my God. So here in our text, God is watching Jonah. Hey, hey. God knows what he placed in Jonah and now is watching Jonah run all over the place to avoid doing the will of God. I know somebody, somebody knows somebody just like that. Rather than surrendering to the will of God, no, you're going to try everything. Used to be a song we used to sing back in the day. Somebody knows where I'm going. If you've tried everything and everything failed, try Jesus. I kind of don't want to sing that song. I'm not advising you in the year 2020 to try everything and then try Jesus. I know about you, but time is winding down. Time is drawing nigh to a close. Look up, our redemption draws nigh. Ain't no time to try everything. Just go straight to Jesus. Try him. He won't fail you. My God. Jesus, you got to go to Jesus. Uh-huh. And so, <laughs> as God often does, he causes life to happen. Talking about Jonah. He causes life to happen in order to coax you back into right alignment with his will for your life. <laughs> God wanted Jonah to be the carrier. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Jonah, he says, saying to Jonah, Jonah, carry my word. Mm -hmm. Jonah, carry the truth to an untruthful people. Jonah, carry words of life. Jonah, carry divine words. Sadly, Jonah refuses to be the carrier of the gospel. And so God is about to use another carrier to teach him. Let's now view the text and see how God uses another carrier for his runaway mouthpiece. <laughs> As we look at the following three points. Point number one, the condition of the sea. The condition of the sea. Point number two. The continuance of the sea. The continuance of the sea. And then point number three, <laughs> the conclusion of the sea. 
the conclusion of the C. Let's deal with it. Point number one, the condition of the C. Verse 11. Then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. By this time, the men on the ship had identified Jonah as the culprit of disobedience to God. And they clearly understood that as long as Jonah was on board, the sea was going to be boisterous. They understood that as long as Jonah was being carried on their ship, there would be no calm concerning this ship. The rebuking, listen to this, the sea was rebuking Jonah who was on their ship. Hmm. The sea was shouting at Jonah who was on their ship. The sea was demanding that Jonah pay attention while he was on their ship. <laughs> Church, hear me. When men and women of God uh -huh, try to run away from what they should be doing, those around them will suffer the consequences of their silence. Let me make it plain. Let me make it plain. When men and women of God in Bermuda, let me deal with my home. Let me deal with my home. When men and women of Bermuda refuse to speak out against sin, when it is happening, we are the cause of others being lost at sea. Sha, sha, hey, hey. Glory to God. I'm going to repeat that again. It's going to be uncomfortable for many, but I got to repeat it again. Hear me. When men and women of Bermuda, come on, the mouthpieces, huh? uh, the ones that want to preach, come on, the ones that want to tell everybody what to do. When men and women of Bermuda refuse to speak out against sin, when it is happening, we are the cause of others being lost at sea. Yes. Many souls have been lost in the sea of sin because the church stood by silently while our community, as they say, went to hell in a handbasket. Come on. Huh? Let me tell you that the silence of the church means that you are in agreement with the world. You give your approval of what the world is doing when you don't stand on the stormy seas of life and declare what thus saith the Lord. And you don't declare it afterwards. You don't declare it months afterwards. But in the midst of the sea, in the midst of the storm, when the storm is raging, you stand up and you declare peace. Be still according to the word of God. Sheba Kandai Orobose. We've got to speak. I'm grieved today. I'm grieved. My heart is heavy because the church, the church leaders are not, they're not speaking when the sea is raging. Let me be plain. Let me be plain. See me go and make it plain. Same sex marriage. Soka. Pride parade happened and barely a squeak out of the mouths of the servants of God. And we wonder why Bermuda is challenged today. I ain't happy to report it, but I'm going to report it. I ain't happy to say it, but I'm going to say it. Don't speak months afterwards. Stand up like Peter on the waters. Keep your eye on Jesus and speak to the winds. Speak to the raging sea. Glory to God. Jonah slept while the sea raged. Preachers of the gospel slept while the sin raged in our island called Bermuda. Hear me. The text is clear that the role and responsibility of those under the remit of God 
to speak before the storm and speak while the storm rages, that's your responsibility. Don't sleep, speak. Come on now. Don't sleep. Don't slumber. Don't shut up. Speak. You got the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. You say the Holy Ghost is within us. If the Holy Ghost is within us, there comes upon us the Shekinah or the Shekinah glory of God. And we don't speak because we take joy in it. We speak because we can't help it. That's when we have the can't help it. I can't help but speak what God has told me. I must speak during this time of storm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so we can't look at Jenna and cut our eyes at him. Huh? I got a bunch of Jenna's in Bermuda sleeping while the ship is in stormy seas, shutting up when we should be opening up our mouths during the time. Come on, church. Sheba. The scripture presents a powerful picture as it says that the sea, hear me now, hear me, this is important. The sea wrought. The sea wrought. Well, I looked at the word wrought. Comes from the Hebrew word halak, meaning to go, walk, or come. <laughs> I'm going to help you here. I'm going to help you, I promise you. Church, the text is saying, that the sea basically <laughs> had a mind of its own and that no matter where they were stirring it, it was walking the other way. Come on now. This is talking God's word. They wanted the sea to come and the sea went. It walked away. They wanted the sea to be still and the sea walked away. <laughs> I hope you're getting it. Listen, that the sea Oh boy, oh boy, you better be prepared to catch this church, catch this, that the sea was literally behaving as Jonah was behaving. No wonder he slept while the sea raged. He and the sea were one. Come on, come on. He and the sea were in communion. He and the sea were having fellowship on the ship while the sea raged. You wonder how he could sleep? Because he was in he was in bed, as it were, with the rage of the sea. He was mad at God because God wanted him to speak and he wanted to be silent. He was mad at God. And now God is showing us a picture of the sea that's mad too. Sheba. Ah. Listen, the nature of this tempestuous sea was a mirror of the nature of a tempestuous journal. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So let's understand something, people of God. <laughs> God <laughs> will use nature to show people what he thinks of them. <laughs> yes, he will. God, watch this. God will use a storm. A hurricane, a famine, might I say a corona to show the people how rebellious they are against the will of God. I wish we would stop looking at this corona thing as just simply biological. And I look at it above. It's more than biological. It's biblical. God is saying something. He's saying something to the church. Church who want to put more confidence in doctors. I, I, I have confidence in them. I, I have confidence in them. But I will not have more confidence in a man, in a woman as brilliant as they are, coming up with their theories, their conclusions. I will not have more confidence in a man than I do in God. God is my refuge. He's my help. Isn't that what we say as a church? Ah, he's a very present help in a time of trouble. Well, it's a time of trouble. That tells me that God is present. Come on. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Jonah is sleeping while the sea is raging. Jonah would not listen to the sea 
nor the God of the sea. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where the men of the ship step into the mix. <coughs> step into the mix. All right. Verse 12. This is Jonah speaking to them now. He says, uh, and he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, mm -mm, for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, you know it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, you know it's your fault. <laughs> this is where I was writing this scripture, and I wish Jenna was right by me. I would have bopped him upside his head. Right upside his head. Give him, give him a Bermudian bop. What you trying? What you saying? You mean you were sleeping and you knew when you, you were in trouble? We had to come to you screaming and begging. But hit you upside your head, right there, right there, taking in for child abuse and everything. Bop him upside his head. Come on now. So listen to this concerning Jenna. You know you are the trouble, yet you were unbothered by the stormy sea. You know that you are the trouble. Yet you were able to sleep during the trouble. <laughs> you know that you are the trouble, yet it has taken you all of this time to finally move you to speak the truth. Ain't that something? Listen, as I look at God's mouthpieces throughout the Bible, what I admire is that they spoke truth when it would have been comfortable to speak nothing. Because that's where we are today, you know. People would rather say nothing. Uh, don't trouble the water, semen. Leave it alone, semen. Everything's cool. Just, just, just control things in your church. Don't worry about nothing. Just keep it quiet. See that? A lot of journals, a lot of journals. They, the prophets of God, I'm talking about, the prophets of old, they spoke truth to the powers that be. <laughs> they spoke at the city gate. They spoke for all to hear. They spoke a sure word to that which was against God's will. Jonah finally confesses and speaks up that the sea is acting up because of him. Jonah now, you got to follow the picture, yo. You got to follow the picture. Jonah now magnanimously instructs them to throw him overboard and the sea will be calmed. Now I thought about it. I thought about it and concluded in my own mind that right here, Jonah will do the right thing to be their hero. Oh, Simon, Simon, you didn't say that. Uh -huh. Yeah, some people speak finally so that they can appear to be deep. Yeesh. Some people speak finally so that it, they can sound insightful, like only they have heard from God. God was speaking before the storm. God was speaking in the early part of the storm. Why are you speaking now when it's safe to speak and you have no choice? Hey, hey, hey. Jonah is not doing what he ought to do to please God and be God's hero. No, no. He wants to be their hero. See, <laughs> you can't disobey God, dishonor God, and be God's hero. No, 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 no. What you want to do really is be a hero in front of the people of Bermuda. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, see me. I'm in trouble now. Uh, yeah, you want to appear deep now. But when we needed your deepness, when we needed your voice, where were you? I'm out shape. Mm. I see. I ain't scared. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Where, where were they, see man? Where were they? Sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> uh-uh. No, no. He wants to be a hero. Do right in their sight. He wants to be big now. He knew, hear me, he knew why the sea was raging, and now he wants to do a right thing. Please note, Jonah, listen, listen, Jonah wanted to calm the sea. What did I say? Repeat it. Repeat it after me. Jonah wanted to calm the sea. I hope you said it, all right? The Bible, the Bible, yo, does not say that Jonah now wanted to go to Nineveh. 
I see you over see ya. Kitty. <laughs> you can't get thrown overboard, still disobedient, you all. Come on. <laughs> so while the external or natural sea will soon become calm, the inner sea of the rebellion of Jonah was still raging, y'all. Come on. Jonah going to be thrown overboard. Sea going to get calm. But inside of him, I ain't still going to Nineveh. I ain't still going to say what God said. Nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm going to stay inside my four walls of church and be quiet. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to preach to my own people. That's going to be it. Really? All right, all right. So that takes me to <laughs> point number two, the continuance of the sea. The continuance of the sea. 13, nevertheless, <laughs> the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. What caught me here was that these men had more kindness and compassion in them than this so-called man of God, because they hadn't thrown him overboard yet. They just found out that he's the culprit. Jonah said, throw me overboard, right, Mr. Hero. But instead of throwing him overboard, they rode harder. Lord have mercy, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. They rode harder. They rode harder. Hmm? They were, watch this, they were, <laughs> they were willing to save his life while he had been willing to sleep and risk their lives. Come on, come on. He had been willing to stay on board and risk their lives. Church, look at the effort. This blew me away. Look at the effort of the sinners of the world in trying to avoid throwing Jonah overboard. Yeah. What a picture of the world. This hurt me, this hurt me, this hurt me. Of the world stepping in to save the church. I said something there. The world stepping in to save the church. Listen, I may not be able to gather with my people at 98, but I'm telling you what, ain't no world saving me. It will always be the word of God. See, the word of God is not limited, and therefore the church is within us. We understand that. The word is within us. We are the church. But what a sad picture here when the words of sinners who don't believe like Jonah they have more compassion and obedience than the man of God. Lord have mercy. What a shame when the ungodly have more compassion, more zeal, more tenacity than the church. The only reason you can have a pride parade in Bermuda is because the church is passive, because the church has so many denominations you can shake a, you can't, you don't know who believes what. This denomination believes that, this denomination believes that. Church split. That's why I ain't coming to pray with all of you. Let me drop that there too. I don't know what you believe. Use what you stand for. That's the church. That's Christian churches. All right, move on, Seaman. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, so look at this. They wanted to bring the ship to land. Ran hard. Come on. We can save you, Jenna. We can save you, Jenna. We can. Woo, we can get the ship. We can. We're hurt. Well. That was not going to happen. Why not? Because God had other plans. God planned his plans. God's plans meant that the ship had to stay at sea. Come on now. We know what's going to happen, right? The, the fish can't show up on dry land. <laughs> so the, 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 the ship has to stay on the sea. Hey, come on now. <laughs> They rode hard while hard-headed Jonah was still on board the ship. <laughs> See, what we have to understand is that no matter what, the world should never stir or guide the ship of Zion, okay? What, what you mean, ship of Zion? The ship of Zion is the church. The world, help me, Lord. The world should never dictate. Listen, because I have to render, let me explain it. Let me help somebody. Because I have to render to Caesar what Caesar. 
I have to stay in my house and preach today. No problem. But guess what? You're not shutting down my prayers. You're not shutting down my worship. You're not convincing me that God is not real. You're not letting me even, I'm not even going to be convinced in any way that God is out of control and that all the controls in PLP or in the government or in the governor. Excuse me? The world will never direct the ship of Zion. The world will never direct the church in spiritual matters. Come on now. In spiritual matters. See, that's one of the, this is very interesting. I got this. Okay. Okay. Catch this. Catch this. With all of the instructions, good instructions too, good instructions. I ain't kicking up. With all the instructions the government is given, please note, they can give physical instructions to the church, but they cannot give spiritual instructions. Ow! That's why the church should be her loudest right now. Oh, the church should have no problem. No problem, Mr. Premier. I'm a, I am an obedient citizen of Bermuda. I will render. I'll use common sense, too. Yes, I will. I'm going to party with over 10 people. I'm going to put my mask on in public. But let me tell you, when I get in my own house, when I get where I can, I'm going to unmask. I'm going to lift up a praise. I'm going to magnify God. I'm going to sing songs of Zion. I'm going to worship up and down my house. I'm going to realize that just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He's kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on him. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. You see that? They, they can't instruct. They can't say, all right, uh, you Christians, um, you can only speak eight words in tongues. What? Oh, you Christians, you, you only can say, all right, we'll allow you to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Our God reigns. God, you reign forever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, listen, the time may come when more limitations is put on the church. So while you have the ability, while you can, you better lift up a praise to God. You better praise God all you can. And can it all you get. Come on now. So listen. <laughs> God's church will move in the direction that he has set for them. No matter what. The picture, picture of this ship on the sea. It's tempestuous. The picture is a terrific one. They rode in one direction. And the sea wrought or walked in another direction. No matter what way they rode, the sea was coming the opposite way. Because you know who's in control of the sea? God is. So you, you, you boat people want to take him to land? Well, that's not what God's plan is. He's staying at sea. All right. So who won? God did. God did. That ship was, was not going to reach the land with Jonah on board. That's the key. For God had already mandated that Jonah was to land at a place called Nineveh. The instructions were already given for his ship named Jonah. You're going to Nineveh. Let me read verse 14. <laughs> Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased thee. They're covering their bases. They're saying, listen, we realize it's his fault, and uh, yeah, we're going to throw him overboard, but again, this is not our fault. So don't, don't make us guilty of his murder when we throw him overboard. That's where they're at. Simply put, they lost the fight against the sea. They knew they would not be able to bring the ship under control. They knew it. And so the only thing that they could do <laughs> was yield to the will of God. How about that? How about that? We've got so many people, they fight. Fight against God's plan. Fight against what God wants them to do. You know, if it's bad weather in Bermuda, they pray. Then they fight against God. If a storm's coming, 
They pray and call on God and Jesus. Then they fight against the will of God. You know, when they have a baby, they thank God for safe delivery. Then they fight against the will of God. So you got to see, are you Jonah? Are you a runaway Jonah? Listen, so many times I, I, watch, I watch people fight against God's will. They want to go where they want to go. They want to fulfill their own plans. Yet I am confident that the plans of God will prevail. Proverbs 19 and 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. So you can plan all you want. What God says is going to happen is going to happen. Isaiah 14 and 24 reads, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have purposed, so shall it stand. So in other words, look, row the opposite way. Run the opposite way. God will still have his way. When God's hand is upon you for a cause, come on now, is there not a cause? When God's hand is upon you for a cause, God will turn, speaking of turn, the pages of your life until you line up and become obedient to him. Uh-huh. Here you have men, the men in the ship, the men who believe in many gods. Oh, God, they believe in many gods, calling out to the Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yet we have Mr. Hebrew, Jonah, ignoring the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I said something right there. Listen, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. The time will come in Bermuda when the world, the sinners, are going to be asking the church, will you please speak? Will you please say something? Matter of fact, they did. They proclaim, the man on the ship, they proclaim their innocence and pray for their lives while Mr. Guilty, Mr. Man of God, Mr. Sleeping Jonah, sees the very cost of disobedience as the sea rages. His disobedience has caused this sea to rage. And that brings me to my final point, point number three, the conclusion of the sea. The conclusion of the sea. Verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Now I must, I must say, I got a little tickle here. I think I see somebody, the, the, where I'm going. Notice the Bible said her raging. That, that's a picture, y'all. First of all, if the sea is described as a her, God is trying to tell you <laughs> that this sea can reproduce, that this sea can go on and on and on. Can I get a witness? Don't say anybody in this house right now, don't say nothing. That when a woman begins to rage, when she begins to speak, the worst thing you can say to a woman when she is in a rage is shut up. Oh, the voice just gets a little bit louder. The volume is turned up, and the attitude is turned up with it. And so notice, come on now, I've got my people are smiling, boy. It's the truth. And so God is saying, listen, the, the sea, she is still raging. You haven't done what sea mama told you to do. You, you haven't paid attention to mama sea. Mama C man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have disobeyed the sea. And the sea is going to speak and speak and speak until you become obedient to what God would have you to do. All right. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Get rid. This is what you got to do. Get rid of the troublemaker and things will be calm. I, I want you to get that. You get rid of, you know, uh, hey, hey, I'm a pastor. I, I've had troublemakers, and some of them have stayed in the church for two years after they began their trouble, and I've just been asked to be patient. 
And then when they go, things calm down. Come on. Come on. In church, rebelling against me, sitting down on all my sermons, but want to sing on the prayer team. And then they go, and they see calm down. All sorts of things happen. And I'm going to tell you what, Mama C going to keep on speaking. Mama C going to keep on talking. Because Mama C knows what she's saying. And Mama C is obedient to God. And let me tell you, be very clear. If I don't back down for Bermuda, I don't back down for my people. I have a responsibility. And I will proclaim the gospel message. And we will all have to obey the word of God. That's right. Come back home if you want, but you just have to be obedient. Come back home. Come back home. Hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get rid of the troublemaker and things will become calm. Makes you think. Why is trouble occurring in my life? Could it be that I have a journal, a troublemaker on board my ship? Come on. Check your crew. Check who is on your ship. Check their nature. Check their behavior. It could be that you are sailing with a rebellious servant of God. Check your ship. Come on. Check your ship. That's all I'm saying. The sea won, and then stop fighting. Yeah, come on, mama. Let me pause there. When, when they obey, when they get it, I just quiet my little self down, go in my room. I'm all right. I'm all right. Tiptoe through the tulips. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, what a wonderful day. Huh? This is the same image. Oh, yeah. I've got my number three laughing at me, you see. She, she laughing. But, yeah, you ain't Mama C. I'm Mama C. So when, when we obey Mama C, then everything's at peace. Peace be still, master. The tempest is raging. That's Mama C. That's me. That's me. The billows are, to well, well, are tossing high. The sky is all shadowed with blackness. Come on. I'm talking about when the sea is shouting. But when you obey the sea, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace. <laughs> Yo. Peace be still. Come on now, it's all in the word. It's in the word. Yes, it is. And so, so very interesting that the sea is a she. The sea is a she. <laughs> and so listen, the sea won. Why did the sea win? The sea won and stopped walking in the opposite direction. As soon as Jonah was cast overboard, the sea, sea stopped walking in the direction and started walking in unity. Come on. The sea won and stopped shouting at the shipmates because as long as the sea was tempestuous, the shipmates they didn't know what to do. They thought it was their fault. They thought they could correct, correct their rowing, their stirring. No, it was Jonah. The, the man of God had to correct himself. <laughs> so yeah, the C1, why? The C1, because it was under the orders of God Almighty. That C was not going to be silent until Jonah did what God wanted him to do. God has told the C to keep on shouting, keep on fighting until Jonah is released to the next phase of his journey to obedience. He, he, he's not going to be totally obedient, but he's one step closer. One step closer. All right, all right. Look, forget Nineveh right now. God has to deal with a disobedient servant before he can deal with a disobedient people of Nineveh. That's powerful. I'm going to say something here. It's not in my notes, but I feel it, and you know I speak under the authority of God. God has to deal with preachers in Bermuda. Priests in Bermuda, prophets in Bermuda, archbishops in Bermuda. He has to deal with all them before he deals with the world. God is not a hypocrite. He will speak and correct the people who are leaders first before he deals with the sinners. Can I prove my point? Go back to when Jesus was in the wilderness. He was tempted. And then it says that he came out of the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost. Where is the first place he went to correct? To the synagogue, to church. See, because he couldn't go and minister to the world with the world saying, but look at the church. Look at what they're doing. 
So he covers his base. Now, whether the church obeys, whether the church does the will of God, it's not on Jesus anymore. They will either obey or disobey, but the word of God, Jesus, has done what he's supposed to do. And so we can't go and tell Nineveh what to do, and we haven't even told ourselves what to do. Verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. What a sight this must have been. The sea had been raging. The sea had been monstrous. The sea had been rebellious. Now, look at it, y'all. As soon as Jana touched the sea, the sea became placid, peaceful, calm. Can you imagine seeing the sea moving from raging to respectful? What? Can you see the sea moving from shouting to being silent? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When God's people are disobedient to his holy word, nature screams in agony. Don't tell me that God's earth does not respond to the evil or good of man. Sure it does, sure it does. They tell me that all sorts of recoveries in nature are happening while mankind are shouted in place. Pictures of clean canals, dolphins increasing, swans increasing in numbers, the ozone experiencing a little shift. Come on. Nature has a way of telling us off when we are going too far. Such is the case of Jenna. The men on board are so amazed, even stunned, that they make a move. <laughs> These guys are not dumb. This was amazing. They make a move to cover their bases. And they offer up sacrifices to God. Listen, you and I would have done the same thing. We say, hey, wait a minute now, wait a minute. We still have some more sailing to do. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, Janus God acts up like this. Why don't we give God credit? Why don't we offer up some praise and celebration and vows? It's not like they were going to become Jewish or Israelites. They knew that in order to make it through to the land of their destination, look, we better give God praise. Now, it's no different than when we have a hurricane. And everybody's like, pray? Are you praying? i never seen so many pray people pray in my life than when we have a hurricane. Pray, pray, pray. Then the Sunday after the hurricane, they stay, stay, stay home, away from the house of God, you see? So you're no different than the men in the ship. Actually, they're better. <laughs> they offer up sacrifices to God. Here we have sinners respecting, that's what they're doing, respecting the power of God, sort of how we do during hurricanes. God is acknowledged as supreme in desperate situations. Some people don't call on God until their relative is dying. Come on. I, I had people call me. I'm like, why are you not calling your pastor? Oh, we don't have a pastor. But we need somebody who, who, who talks to us, who talks to God. So we need a pastor. Because they're not in relationship with God until they get to a desperate situation. And I'm going to speak it loud. And I'm going to beseech you, beseech Bermuda, get in relationship with God now. Whether there ever is another hurricane, you better get in relationship with God before time turns into eternity and there'll be no salvation available for you. Get in the ark of safety now. Come on. Amazing, amazing. And so I thought on it further and I also understood it made sense that these men would honor and respect God in order to have a smooth journey ahead. Oh, they wanted God on, the God that could calm a rage and see, oh, we want him on our side, or we want to be on his side. And that brings me to my final verse of this sermon, verse 17. Now the Lord, all this going on, had prepared, so hold on. Maybe the fish got bigger and bigger because he was already well prepared and waiting for Jonah to become obedient. God had prepared the ship before Jonah got on the ship, before Jonah became disobedient. God had already prepared the fish because God knew Jonah's temperament. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish 
to swallow up Jonah. I, I feel something right there. Swallow up Jonah. What do you mean swallow up Jonah? Is he going to prepare a fish to swallow up some people right now? Well, not necessarily a natural fish, but he's going to prepare something to swallow up your attitude, to swallow up your disbelief, to swallow up your next decision. And so now here, here we go again. Now, remember we talked about that? Well, let me finish reading verse 17. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And so that verse began now. Now remember from us reading that word now, it meant that at this time, there's going to be a change. All of the other times, there was no change, but now there's going to be a change. So here we go again. God will have his way. Jonah, now that you are out of the ship, out of the ship of disobedience, God has another carrier waiting for you. God has had this fish waiting, waiting in the wind. And now you are in the right place to be received by the ship called a great fish. Now, let me be clear. He's in the right place because he's in the sea. He's not in the right place because he still, he wants to go to Nineveh now. If he wanted to go to Nineveh now, the fish wouldn't be necessary. So he's in the right place physically, but not spiritually. I want to talk to some people. You might be in the church building, but are you in the building and spiritually attuned to the word of God and what you should be doing? Now the fish is called great. Not only in size, but I believe great in purpose. Great in purpose. Great. The new carrier must be great enough, large enough to contain disobedience. I said something right there. I said something right there. This new carrier has to be great enough to contain disobedience. Because hmm? Jonah's still disobedient. <laughs> this new carrier must be able to carry a disobedient servant of God. This fish, the likes of which will never be mentioned again in the Bible, is a ship of purpose, especially built for Jonah. Hey, it's a personal ship for Jonah. It's a ship of surgery, uh-huh. For God is about to perform a surgery on the heart of Jonah. It will be a three-day procedure. For three days and three nights, Jonah has to experience something. He must die. Taking you somewhere. <laughs> three days and three nights, Jonah, he must die. He must die to his will. He must change. He must change and come in agreement with the will of God. He must live. He must resurrect out of his previously dead state and go to a place in a state called Nineveh to do the will of God. There's purpose in this, in this surgery. There's purpose in this three-day procedure. Uh huh. As Jonah, here it is, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days, so much Jesus, the Son of God, be in the belly of the earth. So just like Jesus was going to go in, my God, go in and almost look defeated. Give him a little three days. And he's going to resurrect and complete his father's will. And God uses Jonah in the old covenant, under the old covenant, to show you and I that, yeah, God will prepare a situation and you will die in that situation. No, not naturally die, but God needs us to die of our attitude, die of our flesh, die of our disobedience, just die to who we are so that we can resurrect out of that place with power that only comes from God. You see, only God can bring you out of a great big fish. Uh-huh. And then after that, you've got to be changed. So Jonah, he's in the belly of the whale for three days as Jesus, the son of God, will be in the belly of the earth. So even in the Old Testament, a shadow, I'm telling you what's to come. Why? All of this, <laughs> because Nineveh, mm -hmm, needs to hear the gospel message. All right, all right, all right. All of this because Bermuda, 
needs to hear the gospel message. Yes. If God has to create a big fish in order for you to do his will, he will do so. Jonah's fish was a fish. Your fish may be a hard situation. Your fish may be a situation that you think, why am I going through it and why me? Your fish may be circumstances that you promised yourself you would never be in and yet you find yourself in them. Your fish, whatever it is, you've got to see it as a journey of fish, that God will use this situation not to kill you, but to keep you for your purpose. God will use this situation not to destroy you, but to demand of you all that is in you. God will not prepare a big fish for you to be gnawed. God prepares a fish so that you will have enough time, enough time to see his purpose and to change your will, kill your flesh, deny your flesh so that you can resurrect to do the will of God. So your fish may be situations, hard situations. Whatever it is, don't go through and come out and still disobey God. My admonition to you is to obey God. My admonition to you is to look up and live. And yes, we're going to look at Jonah in the valley of the fish next week. And you're going to understand that no matter what darkness you're in, no matter what the situation is, that you can still look up and live. Come on now. No matter where you are, I don't care how dark it is. Pastor, I lost my job. Pastor, they've cut my wage to 50%. I'm still going to tell you that if you are connected to God, if you are God's servant, if you are a obedient servant to God, you will live. God will make a way out of no way. I'm telling you what I believe. But you got to surrender your will to his. Don't let God have to create another carrier before you decide to obey God. Obey God now. Choose God now. Don't wait for the sea to backtalk you. Don't wait for the sea to become monstrous, boisterous, wrought. Yield to God. And so as we complete this sermon today, my heart is upon the sin of man the sinner woman, someone who who does not worship Jesus, does not believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may even say, well, I believe in God. I say it, you don't believe in Jesus. Because in Christianity, we believe that God sent his son, Jesus Christ. So you can't just believe in Jah and, and believe in God. No, no, no. If your God does not have a beloved son named Jesus Christ of Nazareth, then you and I are not talking about the same God. Yet I want to give an opportunity for you. I'm telling you, this is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity. First Sunday in May. May Day, May Day, May Day. This is your May Day. Come on. Calling out a rescue signal for you. May Day, May Day, May Day. Time for you now to turn your ship around. Stop running away from the will of God. Stop. You're just failing. You're just repeating and you're just doing insane things. You're just looking for all the answers in the wrong places. I want to present to you Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. He will give you life and that more abundantly. He is the light of the world. I offer you Jesus. If your life is void, and by that I mean if you don't know Jesus Christ to the pardoning of your sins and if you are not seeking every day to walk after him and please him, I'm talking to you and I'm offering you this opportunity. Listen, you don't have to be in the church proper, the doors, to accept Jesus into your heart. You just got to have the door of your heart open. And when he's knocking, come on, open it up. Come in to my heart, come in to my heart, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come in.
to my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room in my heart. There's room in my heart. There's room in my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. There's room in my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. If you're willing, you desire today to make Jesus Christ your choice, I want you to repeat the sinner's prayer after me. This is your day. Don't think ahead. Don't, don't do that. Don't rush ahead. Make the decision now. Repeat the sinner's prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you, Father. I thank you for this day. I am a sinner. Yet I now believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross called Calvary to save me from my sins. I believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And today I choose to make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. God, I ask for forgiveness for everything that I've done. And I ask you to wash me clean today. God, I thank you because I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe, therefore, that he has cleansed me and made me new. I thank you, God, for sending your son. Jesus, I thank you for dying for me, dying for my sin. And now you are my savior. Continue, God, to teach me your ways, and I will do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, I tell you what, if you have done that, if you had done that, I really want you to communicate with me. Let me know about it. You know, the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. They're like a new name written down in glory. <laughs> and it's yours. It's yours. And we celebrate with the angels. Amen. And I'm going to ask, and you're going to see on Facebook and YouTube, they're going to put my personal email address there, swim at logic.bm. And I want you to reach out to me, especially if you're in Bermuda, because I want to be able to communicate with you. Once you're saved, you need a pastor. You know, you need to be bringing, look, you are talented. You are gifted. And so you need to bring your gifts and talents into the household of faith so that we can delight in who God has gifted us with. Amen. So reach out to me. Now, not only that, some of you stand in need of prayer. It may be the prayer of salvation. It could be you need to have your faith increased. You need prayer. Uh, it, it may be a prayer for guidance. Whatever your prayer need is, there are several numbers that are now going to be put in the comment section. One of the numbers is the church cell number, 504-9235. I should say 504-9235. That's our church cell. But I've got a couple of people on my deacon board who are also, because I don't have it written right here, they are also going to put their number right there in the comment section. Because guess what? For you, we are praying. We are praying for you. And so this is something that we want to do. So for the next 15 minutes after we close down, 
for the next 15 minutes. If you need a word of prayer, a word of encouragement, there are three numbers that you can call. And I invite you to reach out to them. They will pray with you. They will pray for you. Amen. Amen. This is how we serve the community. This is how, this is how we do it. Amen. This is what we are doing because we always want to be an encouragement to you. And so today I thank God for you tuning in. I know that your heart and your soul, you've been encouraged. And I pray that even for this week that you'll continue to be blessed. I'm going to give a general closing prayer um, because we want to continue to pray over the island of Bermuda and over the world in general. We're going to give a closing prayer before we conclude uh, the service on YouTube, Facebook. Amen. Here we go. Father, God, we thank you. God, thank you for your word. It's living word. It's giving word. And God, we pray that your people have received it today. Father, even as we are yet in different circumstances, not the norm. God, things will never be the norm. Yet, God, we know you're still in control. God, we bring to you the island of Bermuda. God, we bring to you the family of that seventh victim uh, casualty during this season of this pandemic virus. God, we ask that you will comfort the family, comfort all families that are going through. My God, teach them to lean on you as never before. And God, we're so grateful because we know that the Holy Spirit, what his chief job is to comfort. Hence, he is called the comforter. And so, God, we pray your Holy Spirit. Father, we come and we bring to you uh, the leader of the country, uh, Premier, Premier David Burt. God, we pray that you will continue to give him wisdom. God, give him an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. God, help him in all that he does to understand that God is above all, that God is sovereign. God, you are sovereign. Father God, we pray for places all over the world, the UK, America, Canada. God, that you would yet show up for your people. So many experiencing loss, yet you found us. And because you found us, we will, we will never really be lost. Not at all. God, you have your way. Let this be a week that's positive. God, we speak to the nature of the people that want to be rambunctious. My God, that you'll calm the seas of Bermuda and that you'll cause us to appreciate rules and regulation. God, you have your divine way. And again, God, while we're going through all of it, we're going to praise you. We're going to honor you, magnify your name, glory in your name, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, protect the, those who are on the front line working, nurses, medical, those in the medical system. God, we have a daughter who works in the medical field. So, God, we know that our prayer is certainly for your protection around them. Remember those that have compromised immune system. My God, build up their immune system even right now. My God, have your way, God. We believe you. God, I'm asking for you to do it. I'm not even asking God for uh, advice from this person and that person. God, I'm asking you to show up and do. Do only what you can do. So, God, we glorify you, magnify you, and we bless you. We consider it done. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you there, and thank you again for being with us. Um, certainly, I'm going to give a shout-out to Mom and Dad. I know you're watching, and my sister Allison. Um, God bless you real good, and um, God continue to keep all safe. Amen, as we continue to go through. And just know again, we appreciate you tuning in. And I'm going to end it here by saying, well, you know what I'm saying. Blessings.